If there's one thing machine embroiderers deal with, it is tons of thread. We tend to collect and hoard spools and cones of thread, and it's hard to keep it all organized. Your thread can actually get damaged when they're stored all jumbled together, which can lead to more thread shredding and breakage. That's not good. Let's take a tour. I'll show you ways that I store thread in my studio, as well as different ways I found on the internet. And I'll show you some neat ways to store your collection so your thread stays healthy and it's easy to find the colors and fibers when you need them. The easier it is to put away your threads, the tidier your space can stay. Hey folks, I'm Lucy at Ballyhoo Creations where I design dolls and plushies and puppets that you can make with your embroidery machine or sewing machine. Let's look at several different options for thread storage, whether it's tucked away in a drawer or out on display on a thread rack. And which types of storage are a bad idea? I'm going to talk about that too. And I'll share some tips and tricks along the way, like how to keep your threads from unraveling on the spool when you're storing them. First, let's talk about spools, cones, and bobbins. You may hear me use the word spools and cones interchangeably because with machine embroidery, we're probably using both. You should count how many spools and cones of thread you have before you go out and buy a storage for it because it, you don't want to spend money on an expensive cabinet or something and then find out you actually have more thread that will fit in it. Or vice versa, you don't want to buy something that will store like a thousand cones and you have a hundred. So know what you've got before you spend money on a storage unit. Not a storage unit like I got to put all my thread in the storage unit. You don't want that much thread. So a storage device, I don't know, storage doohickey. What do you call the, like a thread rack or whatever. And consider how much thread you might be buying in the future so that you have enough storage space for your new cones and spools later on. Spools are the smaller sizes of thread like these, and a spool has a, both a top and a bottom on there. A spool typically has less than 300 yards or meters of thread on them. Cones have just the bottom with an open top, and they tend to have 500 yards or meters, and usually more like 1,000 or even 5,000 meters on this jumbo cone. Um, some of these, this is 550, so usually more than 500 yards or meters. This is over three miles of thread on this jumbo cone. It's crazy to think that, but that's how much is on there. You'll also find larger cones for things like machine quilting or especially for long arms, and serger thread also comes on big cones. And then we have bobbins. You can get pre-wound bobbins or you can wind your own. And bobbins aren't standard, so a system that stores bobbins might not work for all brands, especially if you're using the Bernina jumbo size bobbins. And we'll get into a little bit of bobbin storage as well as the spools and the cones. You need to decide how you want to sort your threads. You could sort by color, by brand, by type of thread. There are different ways you can do it. I don't do a lot of photorealistic embroidery, so I don't sort by color. I do a lot more in the hoop embroidery, so I'll keep my 40 weight poly threads together. I'll keep my cotton threads together, I'll keep the metallic threads separate from that. That way, whatever project I'm working on, I can easily see what colors of threads I have for those thread types. But that's just me. You might want to sort everything by color, or you might want to sort by brand because you're doing a photorealistic thing and you want to use the exact color so you know your Madeira number whatever is over here and your sulky number whatever is over in this area. So however it works best for you, choose a sorting type. Don't jumble your threads. Jumbled in containers is a bad idea and can damage threads. Don't store them in tins and bins. The plastic of the spool or cones can cause tiny scratches on the thread and that will eventually lead to shredding and breakage. I know our grandmothers probably stored their threads in a tin or a jar, but that's not good enough for our threads. Thread racks. Racks can hang on a wall or sit on a table or shelf. You can find racks made of wood, metal, or plastic. You can get plain wooden ones from Joann's or other stores. I used those years ago. The wood is pretty cheap and sometimes the pegs break and also the peg spacing doesn't work well for different sizes of spools. And you need a different rack for large cones, which also isn't ideally spaced. These are good to start out with, but you might outgrow them eventually. Here's a metal one from Hobby Lobby. It's real pretty, but these don't hold a lot of thread. It looks nice as a decorative feature, but the pegs are too close together to hold more than the really skinny spools. This Amazon one sits on a table. 
You can watch my video review of this one by Sotek. I really like this one because it comes with some long pegs to hold the jumbo cones and the pegs are configurable. So you can put it on a table or hang it on the wall. I also have a thread valet and I still have two of these since I reviewed it a couple of years ago. It's held up well for small spools to medium cones, but it's not made to hold the large cones and it will bend out of shape with the really heavy ones. I think they have updated the design for that problem though. I still love mine and I use it to hold my specialty threads. It's like wall candy for my sewing studio. Dust and sunlight are not as much of a problem with polyester embroidery threads as people may think. It can be a problem with cotton threads, but not so much with polyester, which really doesn't fade in the sunlight. And dust and lint can build up on your spools. However, you can just blow on and blow most of that dust away because polyester is plastic, so it's not going to stick. But if you're worried about that, you can make a curtain over your thread rack, like the Thread Valet has a dowel rod that comes with it, and you would hang it up top. You make your own curtain out of fabric, and then you put that dowel rod in the top of the curtain, and then you would hang fabric over the top of your thread rack, and you can do that with any thread rack, really. Or you could store your threads in a drawer or somewhere out of the sunlight and away from dust. And we're going to get to that next. Drawers full of thread. If your threads are made of natural fibers like cotton, wool, silk, you do want to keep those away from direct sunlight because the sunlight will degrade and fade those threads. It's not a huge deal for polyester and birdie thread, but it is a problem for other types. I have a few drawers of thread here. These are the Alpha drawers from the Container Store, and many people also use the Alex drawer units from Ikea because they're a good depth for holding threads. You can also buy something similar at Michael's Craft Stores, but they are not good quality. The drawers don't glide open very easily, and you can't reach stuff in the back. So that's a thumbs up for the container store drawers or the um, Alex drawer units from Ikea. Crafters love those, but it's kind of a thumbs down for the drawer units that you can buy from Michael's Crafts. And I've also used the plastic drawers that you can buy like at Walmart or Target or something. Those are hard to open, and especially if they get a lot of stuff in them, which thread can be heavy, they don't open very easily, and they're probably going to cause you more headache than not. So if you're just starting out and that's all you can afford, then definitely go with something like that but over time you might want to upgrade to a better drawer unit. When it comes to drawers, it is a buy nice or buy twice kind of deal. Use drawer organizers to lay spools flat so you can see them and keep them from tumbling all over the place. Or you can use golf tees glued to like a cutting mat or other surface to hold your spools upright. A woman named Donna in a Facebook group said she stores thread in her IKEA Alex drawer unit by gluing short golf tees to Dollar Tree clear cutting boards, those little cutting mats to hold the spools upright. She said she had to go to a sporting goods store for the short golf tees because the Walmart ones only had, um, they were too long to fit in the Alex drawers. So hopefully her tip can help someone else with their thread storage. This isn't her setup. This is one I found that's similar on Pinterest, but you get the idea. You could also buy thread spool holders for drawers. This unit actually came out of an art bin brand of plastic tote that I don't use anymore, but you can find other versions on Amazon or you can make your own with skinny dowels glued to a base, similar to the golf tee method I just talked about. Thread cabinets. If you have the money or you like flipping thrifted furniture, you can store your thread inside a cabinet, maybe with glass doors, or maybe an expensive one that holds hundreds of cones. Here's some examples on Pinterest. I would hate to be opening that glass door a million times though. I don't think that's practical for machine embroidery. I would be too lazy to put my threads back. But different strokes for different folks and this may be perfect for some of you. Pegboards, yay! Pegboards are a great way to store thread if you want to use them. You can use the small hooks to hold the small spools and then the long hooks can hold larger cones. This is an Ikea pegboard. You could also go to the hardware store and buy pegboard. There are a lot of different systems out there for pegboard. There are a lot of people on Etsy selling different ways to store thread and bobbins for different pegboards. Go and do an Etsy search for pegboard thread and you'll find lots of options there. Here's one that holds several spools, probably smaller spools. Here's an, a, a design that holds thread and bobbin together. You can even buy a little caddy that holds 10 different bobbins like this. 
So there are a lot of options on Etsy. These people are using their 3D printers to print these different ways of holding things onto a pegboard. So they're worth checking out. It's pretty neat. For boxes, bins, or trays, these are not the best for frequent use because it takes up a lot of table space every time you put it on the table. And by the time you open it up and the lid is also going to take up twice the space. I mean, look how much it, workspace is very valuable for us. So we don't have this much space usually. So I'm not a fan of boxes and bins and trays and things like that. Um, unless they're smaller, but they are good for storing things like I've got my serger threads in here that I don't use these very often. So it's okay that I stash these away in a box and only pull them out infrequently. But for threads that you're going to use more frequently, I would not recommend storing in boxes like this because if it's too hard to put away like this is, you're just going to leave them out. If you're storing the large cones instead of the smaller cones or spools, you will need longer pegs that are farther apart for that. So keep that in mind. The So Tech thread rack that I showed earlier does come with some longer pins to, to hold the um, bigger spools or bigger cones. Big cones need more support. We all know that. And if you're storing on a pegboard, also remember when you're at the hardware shopping for the pegs, buy the longer pegs for the big cones. For bobbin storage, I've got several ideas I can share here. If you're using pre-wound bobbins for your embroidery machine, which I highly recommend, you can keep those jumbled up in a box or bin, since these don't have any sharp edges that are going to scratch your bobbin thread. I keep my pre-wound bobbins in these slide-out bins on my IKEA pegboard, and I usually keep a few right next to my machine, like right underneath the multi-needle as well. For those times when your bobbin needs to match the top thread, like on dish towels, you can keep those bobbins near the cone or spools if possible. Otherwise, they can get lost. I've got a few here that I'm storing on binder clips that are next to the types of threads that I use them with. So you can put them on binder clips if you want. You can also put those bobbins under your small spools or on top of them if you have longer pegs on a thread rack. There's a lot of different boxes and storage thingies for holding bobbins. You saw a few when we talked about the pegboards and the Etsy sellers. And there are all kinds of shapes, colors, and sizes of containers made for holding bobbins. But bobbins are not a standard size. So if you're going to buy something that holds bobbins, make sure you measure your bobbins to make sure they'll fit in the holder that you're buying. Especially if you're using the Bernina Jumbo bobbins, which tend to be much bigger than the other sizes. I know there are gadgets and little doohickeys all over the place that can attach the bobbin to the thread or that store bobbins. There's a lot of that out there and use those if you like them. It's just that with machine embroidery, we're usually using uh, a pre-wound bobbin or a, um, a bobbin thread like either white or black so that there's not a lot of bulk on the underside of your embroidery. And so since we're not always using uh, matching the bobbin to the top thread like in other types of sewing, the need for all those bobbin holders, you just, you don't need them as much for machine embroidery. If you're also sewing though, then get whatever you need. But I'm just not a big fan of all the little doohickeys that attach the bobbin to the thread spool. I don't use those, but if you do use those, then go ahead and get whatever works for you. Keeping threads from unspooling. To keep your thread spools tidy, you want to not have a bunch of thread hanging off because that's just going to create a jumble in your drawers, pegboards, whatever. So we want to keep those thread tails all cleaned up. And most of the better quality spools, here's a, a Floriani, they have this tension disc at the bottom. And you can just slide your thread in there. See how that works? And that'll keep the thread from coming unspooled. Um, here's a, what is this, Madeira. Same thing, little tension disc on the bottom of the spool there. And you can just use your fingernail or something to push it in. Some of the spools um, don't have that. Some of the older spools like this don't have anything like that. We used to have a little slit that was cut in them that would hold the thread, but that actually was sharp and would damage the threads if it was up against other threads. And so we don't like to use that anymore. Um, and then some other, this is a SIM thread that I bought off of Amazon, and they don't have any way to keep their thread tidy either. Same thing with, this is a Sewology brand from Hobby Lobby, and there's nothing on here. So I'll show you how to keep uh, your thread tails tidy on spools that don't have that. And also sometimes the tension disc is a little hidden. Sometimes there's a little telescoping bottom, and you can put the tail in here and then snap that closed again. 
One way that people like is something called Hugo's Amazing Tape, and it's not actually tape. Do not use tape on your thread. The sticky residue will stick on there and cause you problems as it runs through your machine. So don't use any kind of sticky tape. This doesn't actually have any sticky adhesive on it. It's just like a thin layer of plastic that's like cling wrap, but thicker. And it uses static electricity to hold itself in place. So it just sticks to itself and you would just wrap it around your spool. I used to use this and I liked it, but now instead I just tie my threads off and I'm gonna show you a special kind of knot that helps you do that. I'm gonna use my um, a heavy duty brown thread here and what you do is you take a few inches of thread and pull it back on itself like this and then use your fingers over here to loop around. So just one, two, three times or so, give it a little twist and then take that loop that you made and go over that spool of thread. And you can go ahead and pull it taut at this point. And if you pull in one direction, it actually gets loose. But if you pull in the opposite direction, it tightens it up into a knot. Just clip that off, leave about an inch or so on there. And when it's time to use the thread, you just pull it in the direction where it loosens it like that, and then just reach into that loop and it comes undone very easily. I'll show you one more time how to do that. This may look complicated, but once you do it a few times, it's really quick and simple. One, two, three, two or three times is all you need. And then just pull that. And if it's not quite tight enough, just play with which direction. See how if I pull in one direction, it's looser, but then I pull in another direction and it tightens right up on that spool. So that's the way that I like to keep my thread tails tidy now. And once you learn that knot, it goes so fast that it's easier than messing with the Hugo's tape or actually it's sometimes even easier than trying to get it into these little tension discs. But if you have the tension disc, use that. That's really the, the quickest and easiest way. If you don't, use that knot that I showed you. Some people also like to use like a ponytail holder or something like the fuzzy ones and they'll put that around. But that's just one more thing that you got to set aside when you're using the thread. So that's why I like this not you don't have to buy anything works for any type of spool um, so give that a try see if you like it we've talked about all kinds of ways to store your threads from racks and pegboards and drawers and even ways that I'm not really fond of like boxes and bins that take up too much of your workspace when you open them up we also talked about different ways to sort your thread collection and how to keep your thread tails from getting all unraveled off of the spool or cone you really should look at different ways to store your thread and find a method that works best for you. What works for one person doesn't work for everyone else. So find a way that works best for you and then work with that. And now that you've seen different methods that I've showed you and you know what they're called, you can do image searches for those different things and get more ideas on, for example, different ways to store threads in drawers or different types of thread racks and cabinets and all of that. I'll also say that thread racks are different than thread stands, which you use while you're embroidering and look for a future video where I talk about how to use a thread stand that's coming up. I'm also going to do some videos on storing other things for machine embroidery like how to store stabilizers that so many of you ask me how I'm doing this back here. So I'm going to make a separate video on that. Happy stitching and I'll see you later folks.